I am Dr. Rajiv K. Gupta, Professor, Department of Zoology, JNR and Vyasi University, Jodhpur. Today we will explain about or we will understand the insect head and its segmentation. Basically, the insect head consists of six segments. We know it nowadays. However, the insect segmentation need to be explained here from a primary type of insect structure, that of theoretical worm-like ancestor. In this diagram, you will find it that a prostomium and mouth is there and body elongated with segmentation is there. In the b, you will see that except the prostomium, all segments are metamerically having the appendages onto lateral side. In the c, you will see that the appendages are little larger as well as a uh, paraproct or the last abdominal segment has got a an ulcer site. In the D, one can see the I along with enlargement of the 6th, 7th, 8th, 7th, 8th and ninth segment as well as the caudal or the 2nd, 7th uh, and uh, this one 8th segment of the abdomen. In the E, this is a full flesh developed insect. One can see the distinct head, the 3 segments of thorax and remaining segments of the abdomen. Thorax has got three appendages that is in the form of legs and abdomen with the ten segments having anal sarsi and the second last segment with the <coughs> genital armature. Insects like other arthropods are built up of a segment plan. Each segment basically has a dorsal sclerite of cuticle. If you see the segment in transverse section, then there is a dorsal sclerite of cuticle, the tergum. It is called as tergum joined to the ventral sclerite that is the ventral surface sclerite is known as the sternum and lateral side membranous area they are the pleura. Arising from the sternopleural region on each side is a jointed appendage. In insects such segments are grouped into three units the head, thorax and abdomen. This is to be remembered that each segment has got three units that is dorsal side tergum, ventral side, sternum and on to the lateral side, the pleura on either sides, pleura, pleuron is the singular, pleura is the plural. From the sternopleural region, each side has a jointed appendages, that is the loose fittings or the so called uh, unstiffed region, that is the pleuron. In insect, such segments are grouped into three units, that is the initial six segment in the head, 3 segment into the thorax and 10 segment into the abdomen that constitute the 19 segment structure of an insect. This figure clearly depicts the same antenna, none, mandible, maxilla, labium, walking legs 3, 3 pairs, then 19 is the stylus, 18 is the circus from posterior end and 17 is the male claspers, 16 external genitalia both sexes and 15 is ovipositor in female. This is the segmental arrangement of an insect body. The first is antenna no doubt developed, however, the second is the clear cut antennal segment and first is the pre antennal segment. This diagram shows the head segmentation plan taking it from a crustacean eubranchipus up to the aterigot maculis in the diagram B. One can understand that procephalon has got first and second antennary segment followed by lab labrum then mandible fir maxillipede first, second, third, fourth and later on the thoracic segments. In insects such as maculis, there are segmentation you can see it antennary is the first, maxillipede, mandible, maxillipede or maxilla and then third is the labium. So, one can understand that the protocephalon segment has got some primary three segmentation body that is the following gnathocephalon. However, protocephalon of a crustacea has got a little bit difference than that of a evolved insect or that of maculis. The definite segmentation plan of an insect, fact as well as theory. Fact is like this, you can see a acron or the followed by antennary segment, labral, mandible, maxillary and labium segment joining together with the cervix or the neck. However, theoretically embryonic head lobe and post antennary appendages one should see it 
that ab antenary appendage followed by post antennal appendage then granthocephalon that is first second third fourth there are actually four segment in the granthocephalon this is what we will explain in a later diagrams in these segmental units various parts of the segments may be lost or greatly modified the anterior most unit the head has appendage which are modified for feeding purposes whereas in middle region thorax contains appendages for walking that is legs and wings the abdomen of insect usually express the loss of appendages except a few segmental appendages may be retained which would be modified for reproduction purposes in either sexes so this diagram explains something different डिफरेंट इन सेंस के इंसेक्ट बॉडी में सबसे पहले हमारे सामने हेड के सेगमेंट है उसके बाद में अपेंडिज ये थॉरिक्स के सेगमेंट है और बाद में अपेंडिज के सेगमेंट हैं हेड के सेगमेंट में हमारे सामने जो अपेंडिज हैं वो हमने अभी देखे प्री एंटीनरी एंटीनरी लेबरल मैंडिविल मैगजिला एंड लेबियम लेकिन थॉरिक्स में यहाँ क्लियरली दिखाई दे रहा है देर आर थ्री सेगमेंट्स और उन तीन सेगमेंट के साथ में तीन जोड़ी वॉकिंग लेग्स हैं इसके साथ ही साथ विंग्स भी हैं लेकिन एबडामिन के साथ में जो अपेंडिज का रिडक्शन है वो हमें यहाँ पर थोड़े सेगमेंटल अपेंडिज में दिखाई दे रहा है विच आर रिटेन्ड आप लास्ट के दो सेगमेंट देखें उसमें वो एबडामिनल सेगमेंट वहाँ पर अपेंडिज के साथ में हैं जो कि एनल सरसाई और सर्कस या मेल क्लेस्पर्स की फॉर्म में होते हैं इंसेक्ट हेड Basically, this is a strongly sclerized capsule joined to the thorax by a flexible and membranous cervix or neck. It bears the mouth parts comprising the labrum, mandible, maxillary, and labium, and also important sense organs. Head from outside is marked by grooves, most of which indicate edges, ridges on the inside, and some of these inflections extend deep into the head, fusing with each other to form an internal skeleton. these structures serve to strengthen the head and provide attachment for muscles as well as supporting and protecting the brain and foregut the main sense organ on the head are a pair of compound eyes typically three ocelli simple eyes and a pair of antenna the antennae are very variable in form and function but are usually concerned with mechanoreception and chemoreception the head is derived from the primitive preoral arche cerebrum and a number of postoral segments we have seen it right now snorgrass referred these regions as preoral or prosiphylon on gnatha region or gnathocephalon this diagram shows the same thing as we discussed earlier that there is a tergum there are pleuron and there are sternum so identically here in the b the same configuration is there that is concerning with the maxillary or the maxillary maxillary, maxillary pulp In the first diagram, this segmentation is distinctly clear, as the snorgrass said. One can understand this division by studying the head appendages, the cephalic nervous system, and rudimentary mesodermal cavities, that is, coelom, as we defined it earlier. That a segment is constitution of, or the condition of a segmentation is definitely a pair of coelomic sac, a pair of appendages, and a pair of nerve ganglion. now segmentation of head prosiphylon we should understand what is prosiphylon the embryonic prosiphylic region show no clear external segmentation however its mesoderm in lower insect contains three pairs of coelomic sacs corresponding to the preantennal antennal and postantennal appendages these appendages together with the triple division of brain into protocerebral deuterocerebral and tritocerebral lobes is usually considered as the evidence of a corresponding metamerism in the prosiphylon thus it becomes necessary for the assumption that the prosiphylon contains also a prostomial element acron and the protocerebral lobes of the brain are largely made up of the primitive prostomial ganglion or arche cerebrum which innervates the eyes the antenna are the deuterocerebral appendages this is not the protocerebral appendages this is deuterocerebral appendages and the post antennae are the tritocerebral appendages the tritocerebral segment is considered as the first true cephalic somite as a corollary the antennae and preantennal antennae become prostomial appendages comparable with the cephalic tentacles of the annelid worms now we compare it with the annelid annelid worm the mouth appears to be immediately before the tritocerebral somite and the first ventral dilator muscles of the stomodium are said to be formed from the mesoderm of the somite as we have discussed earlier the worm like ancestor 
precisely the entire preoral region of the head bearing the labrum, the eye and the antenna is prostomial. So, there are three segments preoral region ke kaun kaun se bearing the labrum, the eyes and the antenna is prostomial or baad wale segment the tritocerebral ganglion though united with the brain are regarded as the first ganglion of the primitive ventral nerve cord of insect. They innervate the oral and labral regions and the connected with and are connected with both the prostomial nerve mass and the first ganglion of the stomodial nervous system. Now, this is clear from distinct from this figure. This figure has got labral segment as the upper lip followed by the lateral lips or the hypopharynx is this one uh, mandible cavity enclosing and close or maxillary oesophagus is following behind and oral fold or below one is the labral. Now, section from A A is distinctly depicting the segmentation of pro and duto or gnathocephalon and three part of head is there mandible, superlingula, hypopharynx, maxilla and oral fold. This will clearly show what kind of segmentation constitute the head. The gnathocephalon until now we have seen procephalon now there is gnathocephalon. It contain at least three sobites that supports the mandible, the maxillae and the labium. Some entomologists considered lateral lobe of the hypopharynx known as the superlinguli also represents a pair of appendage rudiments behind the mandible. Therefore, express that gnathocephalon consists of four somites. Since the appendicular nature of superlinguli has not been demonstrated, only the three known somites have been confirmed in this discussion. The ganglia of the gnathosomite in insects are always combined in a single nerve mass which is ventral or subesophageal ganglion of the definite head. So, first or the subesophageal ganglion is the first ganglion that is for the definite head, others are for the pre antennal or those regions which are before the definite head. Now, the gnathocephalon in insects and myriapod the gnathan segments are always completely united with the procephalon or protocephalon in the adult head. In many crustaceans including shrimps, crayfish and crabs in which the gnathan segment form a part of the body and are included with the segments of the maxillipedes and pre peripods in a gnathothoracic section of the trunk which may be covered by a carapace. In certain other crustaceans as in amphipods and isopods, the gnathan segments are united with the protocephalon in a composite head structure resembling that of insect. The arachnida cannot be said to have a head since in most of the protocephalon is combined with the following segments. Now, this is about the insect head segmentation. Thank you.